The second night of the honeymoon, after hours of crying, Claire shared that she was in love with her boyfriend. And I say boyfriend because it's my understanding that it was active. You were someone else. It's like high school. It's like high school, this reunion. The pettiness, the childishness, the immaturity. I, I don't even know where to start. I am sadly not believing what the girls are selling because they're too animated. They're too sort of over-exaggerated in how they're feeling and what they're saying. And Cameron is not here for it. Cam, uh, Cameron and Claire's situation is the, is the shining example of, you know, F around and find out because had Claire not said that Cameron silenced her, Cameron would have kept quiet till the very end. But because she said that and, you know, he decided to let go and is going to speak his truth. And I believe Cameron more than I do, Claire. Anyway, hey there. Thanks for stopping by. It's your girl, Valerie. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Click the like button. Turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos. And definitely leave a comment. In this episode, I'll be reviewing Married at First Sight, uh, Season 17, The Reunion, Part 1. It's sad. It's really sad watching this reunion. I didn't want to review it, but anyway, here we go. So you have the four ladies sitting there in pink because they're in united in solo solidarity to represent, you know, the female empowerment. And it's like, okay. Uh, Chloe's asked, why are you not sitting with the ladies? She said she wanted something different. So she opted to sit next to Michael, even though they're divorced and she is in purple. And so she says, you know, she didn't really bond with the ladies that way. So she is not a part of that group. And that's why she's wearing a different color. But she loves the fact that they are standing for women. And that's, I, I think it's a backhanded compliment. That's my opinion. She was just saying, she was trying to say these girls are bad, you know, crazy and so i don't want to be a part of that and they oh we want to stick up for ourselves because we feel that we've been through a lot of these men these women are not naive these women are not idiots these women participated in whatever was going on in their marriages so the idea and the audacity to sit there and sort of look like you know oh these men railroaded us why didn't you complain to the producers that they were railroading you? Why didn't you complain to the experts that they were railroading you? No, you kept quiet and you sat there. So they're trying to say, oh, you know, the husbands came up with a plan and we agreed on the plan. And, you know, just because we wanted to get married, please keep quiet. And I don't know why Lauren has decided to settle herself with the rest of these, you know, cuckoo ladies. Because, um... She had managed to leave the experiment with empathy from the viewers because we all saw how Orion treated her and she should have kept to that. She should have done what, what Chloe did and stuck to herself and left the three, you know, girls alone because their story or the story that they're trying to create doesn't make sense if you really look at it uh she talks about the fact that Orion said you know this was his platform to represent you know the indigenous people I think to some extent there is truth in that I think to some extent there is truth in that statement but I think the way it's being relayed is all about how you, the perception of how you present whatever you're trying to say and I think the way she's putting it across is sort of putting it in a sense that oh he only came here if he came there to represent indigenous people and to portray them in a positive light he would have stayed married to her until the very end and would have said yes on decision day but I think he was trying to sort of represent that they are just like every other person. And so he wanted, you know, his and his wife's story to be told and to show people that, you know, indigenous people can also, you know, meet at first sight and fall in love. I'm not one to like Orion. If you've been on my channel for a long time, you know, he's not one of my most favorite people. So to hear me defend him is a bit strange even for me. All Claire had to do was keep her mouth shut and not say she was silenced by Cameron. I said this in my last review. I'm going to say this again. Because the moment she decided to say that Cameron was, was silencing her, Cameron opened the floodgates to honesty. Because Cameron was willing to go along with the lie that they were leading for Claire's benefit because at the end of the day she's the one with a career that's more sort of vulnerable to any negativity coming from the show. Cameron is self-employed. He's, he's got his own company. He doesn't care whether or not he's portrayed in a good light on the show. And after all, 
he had said he wanted a divorce. So the idea that the girl sat down and strategized and came up with a plan that let's blame all this on Cameron. I think Claire is the one who did that. I think Claire realized that Cameron had revealed that, you know, she was manipulating him. And so to get back at him, she decided to tell the girls that when we get to the reunion, let's blame everything on Cameron. And it's like, how do you blame Cameron when he left a few weeks into the experiment? Because he took himself away from the show and you remained on the show with the other girls. So do you mean that while he was away, he was busy sending text messages to the guys and the girls that this is how he should behave? No, I don't get it. And for Lauren to say that on day two of their honeymoon, Cameron told her that I know a way we can get out of these marriages. And it's like, but you were still fighting for your marriage with Orion. If you're fighting for your marriage with Orion, why are you speaking to Cameron? And how does Cameron know that you want out of your marriage? How? There is more to this conversation than everybody's willing to make out. And they're willing to blame Cameron because he's the easy target for them. I think because they realized that he had a lot of empathy from the viewers. So they've decided to sort of bring him down and sort of bring him into the mud with the rest of them. And it's interesting as the girls are talking, you can actually see when they're lying because of the guy's reaction. When Claire was sort of making an allegations against Cameron, you saw Brennan and Cameron had the same reaction. And it's like, why are you lying? Why are you lying? I believe the fact that she was dating somebody else. That I can 100% believe because this is the same thing that Cameron said on the after party. So his story hasn't changed. I think the girl sat down, strategized, and Claire, being the therapist, decided to come up with buzzwords. They had an optics conversation in how they were going to come out looking amazing. And sadly, it hasn't worked because Cameron has been able to see through it and has been able to dissect all of it. And now Claire looks like an idiot and she's pretending to want to cry and it doesn't make sense. She sat down with Cameron. Emily asked them, so where do you go from here? And they both said they want, she said she wanted separation. Cameron said he wanted a divorce. He stepped out and left her. So that should have been the end of it. Why is she suddenly bitter if she wanted to be separated from this guy? Make it make sense? hate the victim mentality that the ladies have come up with. I really hate it. And to see Michael actually have to speak up and say, you know, I hate how things are. I hope I don't incite as much anger and vitriol in Chloe as it seems these ex-couples are doing. And it's really sad because the girls have strategized and, and Claire being the therapist, exclamation marks. Um, it's interesting how she's managed to come up. I think this is her plan. I think this is her plan to try and sort of bring, I think the other girls didn't want to bring their guys to be the sacrificial lamb. So she decided to opt Cameron. Um, so she gets to sit down with Cameron and you can see Cameron was right in his sort of uh, when they took a break to say that the girls are taking a small grain and expanding it to fit whatever narrative they want so whatever happened during the experiment they're sort of looking for the negative bits and then they're expanding it to make it worse than it actually is claire spoke about the fact that oh when cameron was sick he wouldn't allow me to go and see him and it's like during filming i remember questioning why she always came on camera to talk about Cameron and never actually went to see him. And Cameron then said, well, I refused for her to come because she canceled a couple of times and I was fed up of her constantly canceling. This is why I refused to see her. And she said, well, you didn't want me to care for you. And it's like, no, please. The two of you had already decided to separate. The two of you had already decided you wanted a divorce. So why would he need you in his life if you didn't care for him that way? And so it seemed it's one thing after another. This is what I think. I think both Cameron and Claire didn't get the type of woman that they wanted, right? And so they realized this early, tried their best to see if anything could work. When they realized that nothing would work, they must have had a conversation with Claire saying, I'm a therapist, you know, I have a certain sort of image to uphold. Can we try and do things in a way that doesn't tarnish that? And I think this is why they came up with the plans that they came up about religion and, you know, the fact that there was problems with intimacy and everything else they said. And so for Claire to now say she's a victim, she's not a victim, she's nobody's victim. I believe she was as much uh, responsible for what happened as Cameron. So I don't feel sorry for her. There's no empathy here for Claire, sadly. Uh, do I think Cameron... Cameron, I think, is 80% right. That's what I'm going to say. Because it's her side, his side, and then there's the truth. So I think Cameron is more honest than Claire. I think Claire is bitter. 
because of what happened, because of the fact that Cameron exposed the truth. I think she thought they would leave the show with the truth being withheld. Because I remember after she spoke about Cameron silencing him, Cameron actually said on camera, she keeps texting me wanting to find out what I'm telling the cameras. She wants to make sure that I don't say anything that goes against what, what we've agreed upon. And so sadly, this hasn't helped. Do I think Cameron really wanted to date her when he said, oh, I would like another chance? No. I think he wanted her just to own up that she was dating somebody else. Because she even acknowledged that, yes, six weeks ago, he said he was in love with me. And it's like, if he's that bad a guy, why, and he didn't have any feelings for you, why is he declaring his love for you? Make it make sense? Some of it doesn't make sense, and I don't get why they keep going on like this. I said this before, I'm going to say this again. I think Claire decided to make Cameron the sacrificial lamb in the sense that oh, let's put him as the person who set up everything and let make him the fall guy. Because when you have Becca and Austin sit down for their conversation, you can still tell that there's hurt feelings there and they really did care for one another, irregardless of how their marriage played out. Obviously, they tried to address all the issues that they had. I'm going to say this. I think what happened was Austin might have liked Becca on site, but then finding out about the history that she came with, I think is what made him take a step back. And in taking a step back, he must have had a conversation with the producer that they still haven't shown us. And this producer must have come up with a plan of how he could navigate the experiment and not catch feelings for Claire. Because I didn't quite get why she kept saying he was lying. Apparently on camera, he would do one thing and then off camera, he'd do something totally different. This is something she said before countless times. So this is nothing new because she kept complaining that he's not the same off camera. So I get that. But... I don't get why Becca doesn't take ownership of her mistakes because she also made mistakes in this marriage. So it's not like Austin was the only person. She maybe should have taken a step back and not be as pushy about him being intimate with her because intimacy was always their issue. And I think the intimacy issue came in when because she was she was post up when they got married and i think because of that austin must have been very nervous about agreeing to be married to someone who had a, a very complex medical history i said this during the time and so i think he didn't want to hurt her feelings by telling her that I, but i also feel like had he told her that yes he would have hurt her feelings but he would have been honest he would have been honest and becca irregardless of how she feels needs to take that into account because at the end of the day she was post-op when she met this guy uh, she still had bandages on she even owned up to that so for her to expect him to see her in this vulnerable condition and then just be jumping her bones doesn't make sense yes there is the issue of the producer i think claire ever exaggerated the story when she told um, um becca about seeing um austin with the producer austin i think should have owned up to what happened to the producer and i think the producer should have been brought out and they should have explained herself and what actually happened in regards to the outing um it's sad i it's sad that you know everybody's got hurt feelings some are genuine some are not i think with becca and austin they are genuine hurt feelings there because they really did care about one another and i think becca has been coached by some of the other girls into saying what she needed to say because after the the sit down she hugs austin because apparently he was crying and then she goes to tell the girls and claire sort of oh yeah i think when austin is around you're a bit more you know vulnerable you know and it's like what has that got to do with you claire what has that got to do with you? Mind your own business. Go back to your ex and sort your mess out. Next up is Michael and Chloe. Michael was lucky to be matched with Chloe. I think Chloe was the best partner they could have found for him, regardless of the fact that we didn't meet the first partner. Um, they have a conversation about their marriage. And I think personally, Michael wasn't able to articulate why he said no. I think he should have been honest. Yes, he went around in circles, but never fully gave a, a, a coherent response in regards why he said no on decision day. I think the reason why he said no on decision day is because he checked out the moment Chloe decided that she wanted old McDonald's. Uh, so she wanted to live on a farm with animals and five foster teenagers. And Michael wasn't up to the idea of that. And I think instead of him sort of taking a step back and not sort of vocalizing what was going on, I think he should have had a conversation with her that I support your idea to foster 
animals to foster children but i think we need to cut down on the number that we're looking at because i think i would be overwhelmed with that and i think had they had this conversation they would have reached an agreement and they could have been successful as a couple it's nice to see that they have a lot of respect for one another there's no name calling there's no you know bad blood between the two of them they both seem to be doing very well they've both moved on michael said he's got a new job and he's learned to be empathetic in regards his time with um you know chloe she taught him how to be empathetic and this is something that is taken on in life chloe wasn't very articulate in what's changed in her life although she said you know she's learned that you know to to let what's not for her pass her and what will be will be but she didn't clearly articulate what her you know latest development is uh do i think there is regret i think there is on michael's part he did say he regretted saying no um but Chloe made it clear that she's moved on. She's not willing to open that door again. And it's a pity that she's not willing to move to open the door. Um, because I think Michael would have benefited from being with Chloe. But hey, it is what it is. And then you get a clip of the girls, the pink ladies dancing. And it's like, mm. they're just showing how immature they are and how petty and messy they are. Because Chloe is sitting on her own, on her phone, where they are dancing and doing a TikTok. And it's really sad. It really is sad. And it shows the level of immaturity. I don't know why Lauren has decided to sort of join that club because it's not doing her any favors. Instead, it's bringing her down and just painting her with the same brush as the rest of them. The conversation with the girls is, it shows a lot of immaturity and it shows that Claire, as Cameron said, is driving the narrative and is driving the girls into saying she's the mastermind and they're her puppets, more or less, because they talk about how bad the guys were, how they didn't get an opportunity, how all the guys didn't want to have sex. And it's like, seriously, seriously, when was Orion going to have sex with Lauren when they broke up right at the start of the experiment? What about Claire and Cameron? They split up as well. So the only two couples that were there were em Emily and Brennan. And Emily apparently made out with someone. So obviously that must have turned Brennan off, which only leaves Austin and Becca. They're the only couple that should be talking about sex. And for them, there were a lot of issues there. I think it's the fact that she was very poorly and that sort of put him off and he never was able to sort of be turned back on. And so... I don't get where the conspiracy theory is coming from. And the fact that the girls are always talking about, oh, there's this text message, oh, there's that text message. Why not give their text messages to the producers and let the producers add them for all of us to see? You can't keep talking about text messages. Claire was talking about, oh, Cameron, send me a text. Oh, Cameron, this, that, and the other. Show us the receipts. Show us the receipts we're tired of being told tales without any receipts and you could see that chloe wishes she wasn't there chloe does wish she wasn't there um she did have a conversation with emily once they came off camera to say don't be combative with brennan but i think emily and um the girls have come up with a plan and they're going to try and drag these guys for as long as they can the guys are sitting waiting for you know their turn and they're just understand that the girls are going to drag them and they're going to do and say anything and everything to drag them because the girls say oh no the guys weren't ready for the for marriage and it's like what did you girls do that shows that you're ready for marriage the experts came to you countless times more times than any other experiment and you never said anything so you played along so please keep quiet so you have emily and brennan be the last couple to be interviewed in this part and for emily and brennan for me I think, I think some, I always said something happened. Well, something happened on after their honeymoon. I think the fact that Emily made the sarcastic remark and it sort of didn't, Brennan didn't like it and he got in his feelings about it and he took a step back. And I think this is why he wanted to take time out. And then they tried to make things work. And I think Brennan's ego is easily bruised. And so, you know, Dr. Pia calling him out and telling him he needs to go to therapy didn't help. It actually made things worse. And so he developed negative feelings about her and i remember even saying that i worry about dr pia sitting down with brennan and emily because brennan doesn't respect her and he's always looks like he's ready to attack as soon as she opens her mouth to speak and so him apologizing i think he's just decided there's no point in rehashing anything and he's decided to apologize and because he didn't want to fight i think this is why emily's upset and she's now sort of uh, trying to speak negatively about him the fact that the 
girls are sort of on attack mode it's not a good look for them irregardless of what the boys did it's not a good look and you can see that chloe is trying to really isolate herself from the situation because she's very uncomfortable and doesn't know what to do with herself um i don't think if she had a choice she would have come to the reunion if she knew how the girls were going to behave and i wouldn't want to be there so, so i can't wait for the part two anyway thanks guys for watching please don't forget to like share comment and subscribe and, and click the link in my video to watch my review from episode 22 bye guys